Hello all, I'm Anna Nefeli Lyras Lagos, event coordinator at Digital Ship, and I'm welcoming you to this uh, webinar using robots for in transit hull cleaning. Today we are joined by Eric Eide from Shipshape, who are also our sponsors, and he'll talk to us about their solution, the Shipshape Itch or in transit cleaning of hulls, which is a semi-autonomous robot used for hull cleaning. We also have Anders Sorenheim, Sustainability and CO2 Performance Manager from Pat Plavness joining the conversation to give his take on advancements in hull maintenance. Moderating the webinar, we have Carl Jeffries, founding editor of Digital Ship. And following the presentation, we will have a question and answer session with our speakers. So I urge you to send in your questions in the question box. I will now hand over to Carl, who introduced us to today's topic. Okay, thank you, Nev. So what we're gonna hear about today is what might be the future automated robotic devices which can clean the hull from Shipshave, which is based in Stavanger. And also we should be joined by their client Cleverness in Oslo. So this is a device mainly for cleaning early stage fouling, which is sometimes known as slime. And that can cover nearly all of the hull. So the idea is that we're going to be uh, using the equipment before we get to the point when we detect from the engine performance data that the fouling has grown to the point where it's impacting performance. So we're always keeping the ship at optimum level of fouling or within the optimum level of fouling. So it's, it's a device that cleans. It's also recording video as it does it. So the ship owner can monitor what's happening, not in real time, but, but later so they can see what's happening. There's, there's more than one device like this on the market, but without naming any of the competitors, we can say that the ship serve device is smaller and simpler than others on the market. And for maritime purposes, that can be a good thing. And it's, although it's a small device, it can find its way over a very large hull with enough time. And it can also operate actually during the voyage, not just in port. So it must have very, very strong magnets, I imagine, to hold it onto the hull. And there's no need for specialists. It's the crew that uses the system. And Ship service developing the system further, so building up its powers to get remove harder fouling, like, like barnacles and that laser scanning, which can measure the amount of fouling. So first we're going to hear from Eric Ida, Eric Ida, who's a sales and marketing manager and co-owner of Shipshave based in Stavanger. So before starting the company in April 2020, he's held tables, he's held positions in all kinds of roles in shipping, including as a mariner. And then we should be hearing from Anders Surheim, sustainability and CO2 performance manager at Claveness which operates 16 combination dry bulk and tanker vessels and has 75 bulk vessels under commercial management and they've got the system on four vessels. So we think the presentation should be about two each of about 15 minutes and there should be plenty of time for questions. So load your questions into the Q&A box at any time. So I'd like to invite Eric to give the talk, cheers. Yeah, thank you, uh, Anna and, and Carl for uh the introduction and uh, the invitation to partake in this uh, digital ship webinar. And thank you to all the participants uh, willing to spend time listening to uh, me and, and later on us uh, talk about this. Uh, my name is, uh, as said, Eirik Eide, and I'm commercially responsible with uh, Shipshape. Now, our philosophy is to provide a hassle-free method of hull surface maintenance where we put the crew in, in charge. And uh, just to correct you just a tad bit, they call, there, there's no magnets and uh, the, uh, the equipment will only be used in transit, not in port. It, it demands the water flow along the hull to be, uh, to be used. So here within, I will tell you more about our product and how it can be useful in pursuit of uh, the uh, CII ratings. Now to, uh, to set the scene, I would uh, like to show some examples of uh, overconsumption. And I hope I have control of the presentation again now. Yep, thank you, Anna. Now, of course, we are not ship owners and not the ship operators, so we don't have detailed knowledge of this, but uh, we, this is an example that uh, we think and portray somewhere along the lines that you will find your vessels overconsuming due to uh, uh, fouling. 
And these costs on the right are based on, on, on these figures, a 22 day transit period in, a, in any given month, spending 30 tons per day and a fuel cost of 500 US dollars per ton. So maybe if we go for the medium here, 10% overconsumption, it will cost approximately 30,000 US dollars per month. So that's sort of the back carpet of this. And uh, now uh, Shipshave has done three verifications uh, and uh, two of them will be described here within. The third one took place uh, after this presentation was submitted. So uh, I don't have any presentation slide on that, but the uh, gathered information has been uh, shared with the DNV to, uh, to uh, have them to evaluate the findings that we, uh, that we were um, given by the, the owner. Now, uh, this first verification that we did was on a platform supply vessel. And uh, we, uh, we attempted to go for an ISO run in uh, two directions in, in a fjord to counter current and wind at full speed of two out of four engines. engines. And uh, the captain was able to identify a 5.6% speed increase. Now, this figure is, uh, is, is um, really uh, uh, an important uh, milestone for ship shape. It doesn't appear to be much with 5% per, uh, percent speed increase, but it translates into a good um, fuel saving. Now, this uh, verification is uh, done by a, a pilot customer who cleaned the hull before startup of uh, using the itch. Uh, this um, owner monitors overconsumption versus a baseline for their vessels. And, and they were uh, able to identify a 5% reduction in consumption. Now, these are early figures. So we are not there to put two lines under that, that uh, it will give 5% reduction. It could end up at 3% but it could end up at 7%. We, we still don't know that. But it's, it's so positive that, uh, that the owner um, elected to buy more units from us to equip uh, further vessels. Now, this is, uh, this is the itch. You, you have to start with a clean hull and keep it clean. And uh, the reason for that is that it, it's equipped with soft brushes and, and they are not designed to remove hard fouling. So, uh, so um, this is uh, important to know about the itch. You have to start with a cleaner and keep it clean. Now, next I will show a, a film uh, and, and please bear with me the, the level of details in the film but uh, I think it's, it's a good introduction to uh, our solution. It comes with audio, so I hope that Anna has put on the audio uh, for this uh, uh, webinar. I cannot hear anything myself. Increases of fuel consumption. Now, now it comes. Biofouling developments just passed after a ship is deployed in the sea. It is the main carrier of invasive species along our coastline. Beginning as a slimy layer, the volume of organisms grows until advanced species like barnacles develop. Preventive hull cleaning will reduce the risk of species being transported from one aquatic biotech. It appears as if the audio is, is gone. I will address all the momentums in the film in later slides so I can get back to, uh, to uh, details uh, because I cannot hear anything. Maybe you can.
Yeah, there's, there's no sound. Maybe you can do a commentary over the top. Can you? Uh, yeah, but I will address this in in slides coming. So it, it's no, no no biggie. The sound is playing on. Yeah, it's not playing on. Yeah, it's not playing on. The unit's tail camera allows you to witness the pro. I think it will be key for uh, owners and operators of vessels in the future to have a solution such as the itch in pursuit of CII. Um, and uh, cleaning in port will be more and more difficult, we, uh, we think. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit sad that the uh, voiceover was not uh, in this film, but uh, as said, I will address this uh, in coming slides, so it should be... Uh... I'm not able to change the slide here, Anna. Can you change it for me? Yeah, thank you. The technique is not helping us today. I will uh, not spend too much time talking about the uh, incentives of, uh, of grooming the hull. And uh, the most obvious ones are sort of hidden under the CII, and that is fuel consumption and emissions. Uh, and then uh, with the ballast water treatment uh, being ratified, uh, we also know now that fouling is the big brother when it comes to uh, invasive species. Now, the third point on this uh, slide is a highly interested one, uh, interesting one, and one that Shipshape could not come up with on their own. It's, uh, it's a major paint manufacturer who said this after being introduced to our solution, and he wished to remain anonymous uh, because he felt that it would not be advantageous for the paint manufacturers, that the uh, owners can use um, a harder paint, a lower cost paint, because they can use the itch as frequently as they need uh, without wearing the anti-fouling. So that one we, we decided to include in our presentation. There's quite some uh, savings there on, on the paint. Now, uh, what does uh, the intrinsic cleaning of hulls uh, consist of? It's uh, mainly uh, a 1.5 meter long robot weighing circa five kilos. And here in, in exploded view is actually how it uh, arrives on board the vessel, where the crew member will have to fit it with uh, three bolts and one nut. It's quite, uh, uh, looks very simple. And the uh, basis for our engineering is that the use should be simple, although the technology behind and operating in the barrier layer of a moving vessel is definitely not uh, simple, but the use of it should be as simple as uh, possible. Now, the film uh, that I just showed doesn't really portray how easy it is to use, but uh, essentially all the user will have to do is uh, start it up, and uh, place the winch on the foxhole deck, secure it to a strong point, uh, and uh, lead the rope over the side. 
Uh, and uh, the winch, uh, we deliver two types of winches, one electric frequency controlled winch and one pneumatic one for typical vessels with explosive cargoes. We, uh, we, um, we maintain that it should be a two-man operation, although it can easily be done by one. Uh, one person should operate the winch and one person should uh, monitor the progress along the side of the, of the vessel. The winch can easily be carried by two men. It weighs circa 50 kilo or can be stowed away uh, in between operations. So it's, it's a matter of just almost uh, plug and play. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, as I said, the, the basis for our engineering is uh, simplicity. Now here we have displayed uh, our, our deployment over the side and I will address this, uh, the difference between where you deploy it uh, in a coming slide. But what we promote today is to deploy it via the Panama Fairlead. And I will, I will explain why. Now back to, to uh, what uh, I mentioned in, in the beginning, the vessel is required to sail because it's the, the hydrodynamics from the water flow over the wings and foils and the rudder that is giving the unit a controlled force against the side and the uh, upstrokes uh, between uh, the water depths um, needed to be cleaned. So today the, the uh, speed window is 10 to 15 knots through the water. And uh, we, in, we work continuously to increase that to be able to accommodate let's say the high speed vessels like container vessels. But today for each version one, 15 is, is uh, probably the max. Now uh, that, that, uh, that speed is required to, to efficiently remove the slime. If you go slower, uh, the unit will uh, move up and down as intended, but we, we fear that maybe the pressure is not uh, high enough on the, on the slime. So uh, the, uh, the each version one is a grooming tool for the vertical side of the hull. And sometimes it's referred to between the parallel lines. And uh, we, um, we, we have made it as a proactive tool to uh, be able to remove slime. So uh, like what Carl mentioned, it, it's, uh, it's, it should not get to the stage where it's hard fouling. Now, this is where I come back to where you deploy it in the four ship. And when we started on this voyage, we envisioned that they should be deployed over the side where typically the, the mooring line goes out. And uh, then we found that we struggled a little bit with the, with the coverage in the four ship. So lately we have uh, experimented with deployment in the Panama Fairlead. And we have found that that uh, clearly gives a better depth coverage in the foreship. So now we can clean more of the vertical side than when we started uh, on, uh, on this um, voyage. Now, this is a film from the very last uh, de development test that we did before we started selling its version one. And it's on a 190 meter bulker. It's doing about 11 knots and uh, has just undergone lightering operations. So the draft is, is merely nine meters. Um, and uh, you will see here, we have deployed it from uh, the side of the foreship. So due to the flare of the bow, it will uh, touch the water a few meters from, from the hull. And as it trails back, when we pay out rope on the winch, it, it connects with the hull. And as soon as it connects with the hull, it dives and starts on the cycles moving up and down. So maybe now I need your assistance, Anna, to, to start the film because I, I see no, 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 that was the change this slide. That's not what I wanted. What would you like me to do? To start the film on this slide. Yes. So here you can see it. Uh, 
Is there is there sound on this as well? No, there's no sound on this. A very choppy film though. But then you can see how it's trailing back and before you reach the vertical side, it connects to the hull and then it gets the water flow needed over the rudder and start the automatic swipes up and down on the side. And then it's the paying out of rope on a winch that is controlling the horizontal movement. And uh, the wind speed needs to be low enough to ensure an overlapping swipe. Next uh, here is, uh, is an optimal uh, opera successful operation made on a chemical tanker that uh, had fresh paint on in June 21 and uh, waited um, for uh, circa two and a half, three months to, for the slime to establish on the, uh, on the hull and then started using the itch. And if Anna can start the film, there's no audio on this one either. You will see that the slime, of course, is not very uh, visible, but you can see a line in front of the itch where it has been and where it has not been. But this is uh, what we are selling a solution to remove the slime before it has developed into uh, more established fouling. So this is a really good, uh, good uh, presentation of how the tool works. Now what we uh, aim here is that the, the owner is using the tool on a regular basis where uh, the fouling will not establish. Now, this, uh, this uh, slide here is quite boring. And uh, when I made it uh, a year ago, it started out as a, a, a sort of a, uh, to provide the evaluator of, of our system with the confidence that we have done our homework and, and done proper testing on all top types of vessels with different speeds and, and different hull conditions. But today, I think it speaks volumes of uh, the interest we, we have received from the market that uh, the, the, the vessel owners and operators really want to see a tool where it's the crew in charge of the hull uh, efficiency and that it, the tool is used while the vessel is sailing. So there's no need for a specialist nor idle time. So I've, I've kept this, uh, this slide in for, for that. Uh, that reason that uh, I think now it's a, it's a sign of, 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 um, of what the market is regarding our tool, uh, a tool for. Now, how does the ship shape which uh, differ from other, uh, what we call retroactive solutions? And those retroactive solutions are typically called upon when there has been an overconsumption for a while. And uh, I mean, there has to be uh, an overconsumption before the owner can note it. And then they will try to schedule a hull cleaning in the next port. And uh, maybe the operation doesn't allow for hull cleaning to take place. Maybe there's no hull cleaners available. Maybe the port doesn't allow for hull cleaning. So then, then the vessel has to do another voyage with overconsumption. And maybe the next port, there, there is no facilities for, for hull cleaning. So then there's another voyage with overconsumption. Now, and uh, ship shape each, uh, seafarers can use the equipment at uh, any time, no scheduling or complex logistics. And secondly, the, we also differ, you can see in on the left side of the slide, the brushes that we use are soft and will not mechanically damage the anti-fouling. Uh, in fact, with more brutal uh, rotating brushes, you could end up with the uh, anti-fouling in a worse state than when you before you cleaned. With the uh, with the itch, uh, you will not uh, damage the um, anti-fouling. So where do we go from here and what have we done? Uh, Shipshave is a young company. Uh, 2021 was the first year in, sort of in commercial phase. Uh, since then, we have delivered 15 systems. 
We have a representative in Rotterdam who can go on board the vessels in the AVAG area. We've done three verifications and uh, four repeat sales. And I think this is the one that we are the most proud of is the repeat sales, because that shows that the customers uh, have found value in our product. And uh, today we are present in four segments of the uh, industry. Now, having said that we are a young company, we, we need to generate revenues uh, from selling each version one. And uh, we need uh, further verifications and uh, we need to gather more operational data from the users. Uh, and and uh, the intelligence comes from the user that we can convey into improvements and, and to simplify our solution even further. And uh, we are also launching a supplementary tool that uh, can cover the parts of the hull that the itch cannot. And uh, the same tool by uh, replacing the brushes can also do the propeller. And it should be easy, uh, equally easy to use for the crew. And this is where we have a stretch to go uh, yet. And uh, the efficiency of the tool that we are, are uh, making uh, we have proved and the background of this uh, slide, you can see a hull of a, of a PSV that was heavily fouled and, uh, and the coloration of the anti-fouling is, is revitalized by this tool. But we still have a stretch to go to make it so easy that any crew member can use it. So that, that's where a lot of uh, engineering and, and coding uh, comes into play. And uh, of course, if we succeed in, uh, in our plans, we, we need to develop the organization for further production, which will take place here in uh, Norway and, and for global uh, coverage for sale. Now, that's what I have prepared today. I, I, I have no watch here, so I haven't seen if I've overspent my time, but uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to listening to me. Uh, and and uh, the, the, the pandemic was definitely not over. So say, stay safe and healthy. Oh, well, well, thank you, Eirik. Well, we have, some, uh, we have some great questions and I've got some to you myself. But, um, we don't know where Anders is, but I guess we'll, we'll, we'll carry on anyway. Um, I've been looking up the people asking questions on LinkedIn. So I just uh, better tell everyone, I'm not totally sure these are the people, but uh, it probably is. So Ashash Pradhan is marine engineer at Exxon Mobil. He's asking, can it clean both hard and soft marine growth? I think you covered this is sort of mainly soft, I think, isn't it? But uh, yeah, it, to, uh, it's version one is, uh, is for soft fouling. Uh, and we are constantly working to be able to close the gap between, uh, let's say, for grooming and cleaning. And, and in cleaning, I, I think more hard fouling. So we are uh, experimenting with uh, different kinds of brushes and harder brushes and other mediums uh, that will resemble the window wipers of your car. And we have also now a pilot that is out for barnacle removal and uh, where the brushes are replaced by some rollers. And, uh, and um, we, we, uh, we have some good tests on that, but it will still be early stage uh, barnacles. It will not be the big beast that you see after five years in Brazil. Uh, so let's say it will, it will cover barnacles maybe up to 10, uh, 12 millimeters. Okay, there's a few questions coming in the chat box. If I could ask everyone in the audience, can repost them in the Q&A box so we have all the questions together. So it makes it a lot easier for us to, to work through everything. But um, so Seb Brindley is a senior naval architect at C-SPAN in the UK. He's asking what percentage of a hull can be cleaned on a vessel with a low, I don't know what CB is since I'm not a naval architect. You know, I you probably know. I think it's block coefficient. Oh, OK, uh, <laughs> BC. <laughs> and uh, I think um, the response to that is, is uh, a very general one, because uh, as he will know that, that there are so many different hull shapes. And uh, but the its version one is is clearly targeting vessels with a high block coefficient like bulkers and tankers, because it's the vertical side that we uh, we uh, can clean. And, uh, but we have engaged with one of the super major container freight companies 
to be able to accommodate also on the more aggressive hulls, the leaner hulls for high speed vessels. So we have set aside a year for this project and have been on two voyages in Europe on, on, uh, on the large container vessels to, to tailor our solution to be able to accommodate that. Oh, so, so Marcus Janssen, so LinkedIn says he's a technical superintendent at Flotel in uh, Perth, Australia. So he's up very late, but he's asking uh, any experience with semi-submersibles. Well, I guess it needs to be moving, so it wouldn't work on a rig, is that? Yeah, there I would, I would uh, say that the tool that we hope to release uh, at the end of this year for, is for uh, vessels uh, in static and uh, for the parts of the hull that each cannot cover, they can, can do a semi. Okay, doesn't it need to be going through the water though to make the robot go up and down, doesn't it? Yeah, the each does, but not the supplementary tool that we're currently developing. Oh, okay. We hope to commercialize at the end of the year. That is uh, that is for static units. Okay, that's got his own motion or something. Yeah. Yeah. So Asem Milev, so I think he's uh, from V Ships in Hamburg, vessel reporting and performance control. He's asking about price. So if you don't want to say the price, that's fine, but maybe you'd like to give some indication or maybe not at all, or if you choose what you'd like to say. To... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or you could say, I'll give you a private uh, answer if you'd like to. I know you... Yeah, I can do that uh, and, uh, directly. But uh, what I can say is that uh, the slide number two that I showed on the fouling, uh, let's say on the mid section of 10% uh, uh, increased uh, fuel consumption, you would, uh, you would um, buy to one of our equipment after two months. Okay, well, we'll put you in touch with Asen privately after the webinar. <laughs> so uh, Barry Kidd is asking if you've got any photos showing the cleaning condition before and after. I think you did show something in your presentation, didn't you? And he's also asking, are there any coatings types where it can't be used like silicon coating? Yeah, good questions, both. Uh, yeah, the, the equipment is equipped with a 4K uh, video camera, so it records every second. So every operation, every second of the video is before and after. Uh, and uh, when it comes to silicone, that, that is an uh, important question. Uh, we have engaged with, uh, with uh, Hempel, to verify a feasibility of the use of itch on a vessel with X7 and X8 silicone paint. And we hope to receive this uh, uh, knowledge from Hempel uh, shortly because the equipment is on board the vessel and has been used. So it's up to Hempel to verify. Okay, so we've got a question from Anna's brother, Raphael, asking, can we use this at anchor when most fouling will occur or does the vessel have to be making way? I think so we've covered that. It does have to be making way until you release your second version, which will uh, work at anchor. Yeah, it's, it's not so much a second version. It's an alternative tool, a complementary tool. So uh, yeah, that, and it sounds like he represents a bulk owner because they typically stay at anchor for weeks. And uh, what better use for the crew than to clean the hull when they're at anchor? Okay, so uh, Swizik Jonkers, Senior Naval Architect at AP Muller in Copenhagen. I've no idea how to pronounce that. So asking uh, what Beaufort number can it work in? Is it a, a weather when it gets too big, you wouldn't use this? Or? Yeah, what we, what we say is that uh, since the unit is uh, constantly measuring water pressure and, and that is the governing, uh, governing the, the vertical movement, it will be impacted by uh, sea and, and swell. So what we say is that each version one should be used in calm seas, but the equipment has been successfully uh, operated in, in, uh, in swell with long periods uh, for up to three to four meters uh, sea state. Okay, so, so Helga Rottingen, our friend from uh, Saga Welco in Norway, is asking the same question. John L.F. Therio is asking, also about silicone paints. And then uh, Thomas Tyndall is asking, can it track which areas are being cleaned and which are not? I, I guess a lot of us have seen your competitor, the one with the wheels and going around and are sort of comparing this in our minds, which is maybe not the right way to look at it, because I guess it's not a... It's yeah, not like but a... Uh, what, what I can respond to that is that we're, we're sort of... Uh, today, it's sort of a dumb unit. Uh, it just cleans and records on video. 
but we, we foresee that in the future, we have to sort of bring in more AI into it, where it can uh, sort of give a progressive message to the crew that uh, you need to increase the frequency because now the hull drag is, is uh, um, this value. And, and uh, so we are working on that. And, uh, and uh, it was worded as we, we intend to bring in a laser to, to, uh, to um, evaluate the hull. OK, so now we're going to Tomasz Szyzielski, who LinkedIn says is manager of the riding team at Carnival Maritime in Hamburg. What is the average time to clean a 200 meter hull? What is the lifetime of the brush? And what, in your opinion, is the best frequency to clean? How good, uh, really good questions. <laughs> I like it. Those are three questions. Uh, and um, the first one, the time it takes. Uh, that uh, to uh, the main time consumer in the operation is the wind speed, the horizontal distance that the unit has to travel. And at the same time, you need to have the wind speed so slow that you get overlapping swipes. If not, you will get sort of a zigzag pattern on the hull and that you don't want. So for a handy sized vessel, let's say 180, 90 meters, draft circa 11 meters, we think that the wind speed should be uh, approximately three meters per minute. So uh, that means that the robot would use one hour in one direction. Uh, and then the duration of the brushes that we uh, do not have five years of uh, historic data on. So, uh, but it, I think it's a little bit like with the toothbrush. It depends on the frequency of use and, and the condition of the hull and, and, uh, and all that. So we, we simply don't have a good answer, but it's not a, 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 it's not a copex to buy new brushes. Yeah, you're not really, uh, you know, somebody could make this themselves, couldn't they? <laughs> I, I guess they could try. But I think there was a third question there. And, uh, what... Oh, we've got a lot more questions there. Govinda Singh, I think. Oh, from a third question from a, from Thomas. Uh, yeah, What's your opinion is the best frequency to clean the hull? Ah, uh, yeah, that one is key. And, and uh, I'll, <laughs> what I say to that, and when I talk to that question is that, even the paint manufacturers don't know that. Uh, and uh, and w when, when we look at the uh, Jotun's uh, hull skater, uh, they say that a hull skater should be used proactively, same as each, um, between eight and 16 times per year. So, so that tells you that Jotun doesn't even know. And, and it, it depends on, of course, the operational area, the condition of the hull, the anti-fouling uh, chosen, and the salinity of water, temperature of water, how long does the vessel stay at anchor? So there's no good one answer to all here, but what we say is that maybe if the vessel is trading in the hotspots, uh, maybe it should be used as much as once a month. So that, that is sort of uh, in between what Jutten is saying on the hull skater. And, and, uh, and uh, also uh, to the intro that you gave, you said that there are similar equipments in the market. There are no equipment in the market where the crew will clean the hull while the vessel is sailing. Uh, there, it's ship shape, itch is the only one. Okay, so Govinda Singh, I think is manager at fleet management in Singapore. He's saying, can you please elaborate on what controls the cleaning force of brushes on the hull? So as I understand it, it's just the force of the vessel through the water is making the brush go up and down and keeping it attached to the hull was simple. Yeah, and, and uh, may, maybe Mr. Singh is a naval architect and then uh, he will know that the pressure on the hull side is V squared. So the speed definitely has an impact. So He's an engineer uh, on his LinkedIn page. Yeah, I think. So this is why we today cannot accommodate the container vessels doing 20 knots because the pressure is too great. But uh, the, the measured pressure that we have tested on on test units with, uh, with pressure sensors is, let's say, between 10 and, and 20 kilos on, on the side. OK, so the, the next couple of questions, I think we've already done the lifespan of the brushes, maintenance of the brushes, weather limit for the use of brushes. Um, should we go on to Hiroshi Yoshida's question? How many vessels have you ever supplied records? I mean, since, I mean it would have been very nice to have Anders. We all understand in shipping industry, people get called away. But perhaps you can. Give a sort of summary of what you've done with him. That's, that'd be very interesting to the audience, I think, isn't it? So, yeah. I don't know if you're able to talk on their behalf. 
Yeah, it's, it's quite, uh, you know, I have, of course, worked my whole career in shipping and predominantly in offshore shipping. And offshore shipping in Norway has been on collaborating on developments and competing in the field. And uh, But to me, uh, deep sea shipping uh, seems more about keeping things secret. So not many owners wish for us to share that they have bought it and some owners do not want to share uh, the, the savings and uh, the use of itch. But the, the one pilot that I referred to was the first vessel that Clavenes uh, equipped with the itch and it was uh, Ballard, it's a combination carrier. And uh, re only recently we had a, a vessel trading from Europe to South America and uh, those figures are today with DNB for evaluation, but they are very positive also. Uh, so we, we, we wait for a blessing to, to uh, be able to share that. And uh, also we have uh, uh, an oil major who operates uh, tankers, and, and there are not that many of those, but I'm not, able to, uh, not allowed to disclose who it is. They uh, dry docked our, our product tanker in December, and uh, the images of that vessel where uh, they had only used the itch on starboard side and not on port side to, to have a comparison was very positive and could document the effect of the itch. Uh, and uh, since the dry docking and new paint, they will use the itch on both sides and compare to a sister vessel in identical trade. So there we will get solid figures. And that is what we're lacking and, and why I said that we need more user data, because today we don't have enough of that. Uh, can you answer the, the how many vessels question? How many vessels have you put it on? Yeah, it was on one of my slides. We, okay. we have 15 systems out, one oh, right. five. So, oh, so that's, that's a, a sign of a young company, of course. We don't have hundreds of thousands of units out yet. <laughs> Oh, so we've got a Stein Kjolberg, who's a Global Catry direct, Director, Hull Performance at Jotun. He's asking, how is the wire, wire controlled? Is it manually by the crew or automatically based on the speed of the vessel? Yeah, the, um, today uh, the itch will be deployed and uh, tied to a rope. There's no communication with the unit when it's, in, when it's wet. Uh, so it, it automatically swipes between a preset upper water depth, let's say 1.5 meter, and then it will uh, uh, move down on the hull. Uh, and uh, when it reaches the lower parallel line, and that reads to the curvature, it measures the angle on the hull, and then it turns back up. So there's no other interface for the crew than to power it on and to uh, man the winch. Right. Well, what's the power? What is the power is for the camera? You're not squirting anything out. You're not squirting any cleaning material out of it, or are you? Now, the, the, the camera and the itch are both equipped with chargeable batteries, and, and that has to be done in between use by the seafarers, of course. Yeah. I mean, well, what's the actual power doing? It's not actually moving the brushes, or is it? No, it's just moving the rudder. Uh, ah, so that right, it's, okay. con it's controlled between the upper water depth miss, and yeah. down when it reaches the curvature. And there's a there's a control uh, center that is telling the rudder if it should move up or down based on the water pressure it it uh, it is measuring. Oh, got it. So that the itch has its own rudder, which makes it go down. And wow, okay, yes, <laughs> yes. makes sense now. So uh, Keith Key, with um, I think he's with Asian Resources Centre, providing services in oil and gas in Singapore. He's asking, are you working in Southeast Asia? Which might mean, are you interested in being represented there? I don't know. Yeah, we are actually. So make contact with me afterwards. Oh, okay. So uh, Parani Singer Velu, I haven't looked up on LinkedIn yet. How do you control it remotely? I think we've done this. I think I suppose how much time does it take for? I think I think we've done that one. I think haven't we? And, uh, should we go on to Thomas? She's Lisi again from Carnival. So if you've got a hull equipped with stabilizers, is that a, does that cause problems? I'm not sure. What? Uh, if, if they're out, 
if they're not withdrawn, uh, then they can uh, cause a problem. But there's no dramatics in it. It's it's a little bit like uh, uh, automated uh, lawnmower, I guess. But it will it will interfere with the operation most definitely if it if it's deployed. Wow. So now we're going to Elona Pogodina, able seaman in Estonia, which is asking. Can you get to the ship's propeller by robot? I think, no, we're not doing propellers, are we? Yeah, but that's that's a good uh, question. I think oh. he's <laughs> talking about uh, the, the concern that any uh, owner should have. And uh, it is, uh, uh, if the unit comes into the propeller, will it damage the propeller? And uh, the answer to that is no, uh, because it's thin aluminum and, and we have, uh, of course, uh, we, we have never uh, been in that situation, luckily, knock on wood, but uh, it, the, the aluminum is so thin that uh, you can ax it in half with a small handheld ax. So if it got into the propeller, it would be the losing party. Uh, but we deliver um, the winch with a rope that is matching the length of the vessel, not to reach the propeller. But yet, of course, we maintain that it's the, it's the use of responsibility to, to uh, before first use, verify that the rope is not long enough to reach the propeller. Wow. OK, so Ian McKenzie, there's a few Ian McKenzie's on LinkedIn. I'm not sure which one it is, but he's asking what happens if he gets attacked? Will you, you know, how do you get it back again? Is that the, something uh, if, it, if, if it's detached, then it's lost. OK. <laughs> So now we're going to Jochen Marzi, who's a director of manager EU research in Hamburg, I think. Um, we'll have to read this question out. <laughs> Do you have a comparison of the effect in fuel consumption between a vessel, between a full cleaning and dry dock and your system? I wonder whether the non cleaning of the bulb, I don't know, a bulb where local friction is much higher than further downstream has a measurable effect. Well, I suppose it's not as good as dry dock cleaning, but uh, it's not designed to be, I suppose, is the, is the answer. No, and, and, and uh, given the each restrictions on, on only doing the vertical side, we can never match uh, the, the hull cleaning done in dry dock, but, but you can't dry dock 12 times a year either. So, uh, I mean, if you dry dock once every five years, the cleaning is good uh, in the beginning and then it gets worse. And that is where each comes in. We don't want the worsening in the performance. Wow, so Mirko Pitotti, who's the responsible for maintenance at Amoretti Amatorio Group in Parma, he's saying, I've lost the prices. So Mirko, you get the prices privately if you'd like to. Well, uh, <laughs> we're not going to do it. Um, he's saying, is it possible to have a Presentation to explain the product to the owner. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, I am yeah. very happy to do that. A... Please, please reach out, and and we will set up a Teams meeting. Wow! Oh, that's fantastic. Well, that, that's the end of the questions. I, I'll have a chance to look through the chat and see if we've missed anything. But um, I mean, just a thing that occurred to me, just in, in terms of understanding this. I mean, this is a kind of light cleaning, but light cleaning could be enormously valuable. I was thinking, you know, if you clean your kitchen floor once a week, it's very easy. But if you wait a year. You might have to get some <laughs> very deep cleaning. It's something like this. So it's a, you know, it's, it's people shouldn't look, you know, just because it's a fairly straightforward and device that doesn't mean it's a well, that, that, that's, that's the value of it, isn't it? It's a light cleaning that the maritime industry has never had before. That's is that a good way to, to see it, I suppose. Yeah, indeed. And and uh, I like your comparison. I, I tend to use the the car and my private hat when when I talk about these things. And uh, and uh, if you if you uh, if you put on a proper coat of uh, wax uh, and that uh, correlates to the anti-fouling, then you're in a better place than if you use something that's not good and the hull is not prepared. And then it's just a light cleaning uh, with high frequency uh, to keep the, the slime abreast, not to develop into fouling. Yeah, yeah, well, that's fantastic. I know you must be exhausted of being the only speaker. I think it's quite tiring, so uh, <laughs> probably you'd be happy to finish. But I don't know if you'd like to give any uh, last words to uh, to leave people with. I mean, if they uh, sounds like sounds like to me, it's a you know, if people want to find a way to improve their CII scores, it's a relatively low investment for a reasonable return. So it sounds like a sort of no-brainer so long as it works, which it clearly does. That's how 
Okay. Yeah, and, and of course, we, we, we realize that since each cannot do the full hull, nor, nor the typical niche areas, and, and not the propeller, we, we, we still are pushing the same clients towards the established uh, hull cleaners. And, and that we aim to do something about. So that's why we are developing this, which is now uh, an eight kilo robot that the crew shall be able to deploy when the vessel is at anchor and clean the rest of the hull or, or the propellers. So we, we want to be uh, um, a one-stop shop for, for hull efficiency. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. Oh, we can leave it there unless you'd like to, anything else you'd like to add for the last, last few minutes? No, I think, uh, think I'm good and, and I hope that uh, participants will uh, reach out and, uh, and that we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, I'm happy to do a team meeting to tell you more of our solution and show you more videos and images. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, I welcome anybody wanting to learn more. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I shall uh, pass back to Neff for the closing words. Cheers. Thank you, Carl. So we have just heard Eric Eide talk about the ship-shaped itch, a semi-autonomous robot aimed to improve hull cleaning practices. Um, thank you, Eric, for your contribution. <laughs> and I'd like to take this opportunity to mention our webinar next Thursday, where we'll, we will be discussing how ocean sourced data combined with operational data can be used for voyage optimization. You may register on our website or you can follow us on LinkedIn for updates. Thank you. And from all of us from Digital Ship, we are signing off. Bye-bye. Oh, Bye. Oh, stay safe. <laughs>